Welcome to another Plants vs. Zombies Last Stand video. Previously, we talked about the fire and ice strategy which on average takes about 31 flags to set up. Today, we'll talk about the elegant two cob strategy which took me 22 flags to set up. And this is how it looks like. The link to the full article will be in the description, and this is how I set it up from scratch. For this strategy, you have to remember that there are three main plants. The Gloom Shroom, the Winter Melon, and of course, the Cobb Cannon. And just like before, you also have to establish your most expensive plants and the ones that take up the most space during the earliest parts of the game. This strategy focuses on the two cob cannons that you build at the start for very good reason. Like I said, when the setup is complete, three main plants will work together to protect your lawn. While the winter melon slows groups of zombies, the shrooms will do all the hard hitting, and the cob cannons will deliver the final blow. The cattails are important too, although they provide a secondary function, they would assist where it's needed the most. Oh, and at this point, it won't look like much, but the gloom shrooms that I'm about to put beside the water plants are very important. Because of their area damage, they'll be able to take care of zombies in land and water at the same time. For the second flag, I make sure to protect the rest of my water plants with more gloom shrooms. You want to take advantage of your cob cannons. They would usually allow you four usages in a level so that you'll have as much sun as you can when you're trying to set up. Flag three is where I continue protecting my water plants. I also set up for the cattails, put some protection for the bungee zombies as early as now. And of course, I also try to set up one of my um, winter melons since my son would allow it. For flag 4, I set up another winter melon and I begin assembling my cattails to the best of my son's abilities. 
During Flag 5, I continued upgrading my melon pots in preparation for the dolphin rider zombies in the levels to come. And of course, set up another cattail for more precision work. I was able to upgrade my existing melon pots by Flag 6, and I also started building up Column 3, which would eventually be a lane of winter melons. In Flag 7, I was able to establish two of the four winter melons needed in Column 3. Again, Cobb Cannons eventually reward you with extra sun, so don't forget to use them. Nothing eventful during Flag 8. As you may have guessed, I continued building on the Winter Melon Lane. By Flag 9, I was able to complete my Winter Melon Lanes. And that on its own is a big achievement, so you should be happy. By Flag 10, I was done with the melons, so I'm able to replace them with more important plants like the jalapeno and the squash. Furthermore, I was able to start planting the shrooms for the rest of my lawn. Flag 11 is when I started protecting the plants that I've already built. That's right, it's pumpkin time. Operation Pumpkin Protection continues in Flag 12. By Flag 13, my first three rows were protected, so it's time to prepare for the Digger Zombie. For Flag 14, I continue preparing for the Digger Zombie by upgrading the Fume Shrooms at the back to Gloom Shrooms. And I also try to secure the Gloom Shrooms beside my Winter Melons with the remaining sun that I have. As we know, Flag 15 is where Gargantuar makes its appearance, and that's a clear sign that we should start building our front lines in the pool containing Gloom Shrooms. Moving forward, our top priority should be filling in the pool with pumpkin-protected gloom shrooms. Second, also look for damaged pumpkins and be proactive in replacing them. By Flag 17, make sure all of your insta-kills are present just in case any gargantuar gets too close for comfort. And of course, fill in that pool before doing anything else, and you might want to fix a few pumpkins here and there. After setting up your additional gloom shroom in the pool for Flag 18, you also want to make sure, if your son would allow it, that your Column 4 plants are protected in case any imps would be thrown by gargantuars along that column. At this point, your focus should be filling in the pool, and things that might prevent you from doing that is if you would use insta-kills unnecessarily. So make sure to put them off until the last minute, like only when absolutely necessary, because let's not forget you have two cob cannons anyway. Remember the same thing for Flag 20, so just continue building that pool and replacing those damaged pumpkins whenever you can. And if you have butterfingers like me, something like this would happen to your cob cannons. Make sure that that specific cob cannon is reloaded before continuing the onslaught for obvious reasons. Flag 21 is when it gets really serious because Giga Gargantuar is here. And if you're really being conscious with what you do with your sun, your lawn should look something like this, or who knows, maybe even better. We're almost done, by the way. For Flag 22, all you need to do is to upgrade the last two Fume Shrooms you added into Gloom Shrooms, and you're done. You can of course proceed with Pumpkin Protection on your remaining plants if your son would allow you to do it. If not, then just do it on the other levels, but as it is, you're all set. If you like this video, 
Give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you're always updated whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.